Is Japan modern? The social, the economic, the political modules that run the society. Yes, they are. But does that mean that Japanese people should forget where they came from, their heritage, their traditions, their culture? Yahoo, everybody! I am Super Yankee. Welcome back to my channel. I have been on a long hiatus of motivation, inspiration, positivity, creativity, all that good jazz about creating YouTube videos. And one of the reasons is because I forgot my traditions. I forgot my culture. I forgot my heritage. I forgot where the term super Yankee even originated from. I forgot Japan. It's been years. It's been years since I've been there. Literally speaking, years. I've been to Spain. I've been to America. I've been to other countries. I've had some stimulus, the COOF pandemic. Everything is happening left and right. And now I'm back in America sitting down trying to write this book about Japan. And it's hard. It's hard to pull out the energy to write this book. And I think I'm not the only one that's feeling this way. I feel the trappings of modernity in my person because I used to identify as being Japanese. I haven't said I was a Japanese person in a very long time, but when I was in Japan, I saw myself as Japanese. And then modernity happened, and I forgot who I saw myself as. By going abroad to other countries, by working other jobs, I'm Japanese restaurant or at Top Golf by doing other things slowly but steadily I have completely forgotten where the term super Genki originated from and I think this is one of the biggest issues that the country faces as a whole because Japan is one of probably the first Eastern modernized nation in terms of importation of foreign cultures foreign economic modules foreign social and social developments japan is there japan did all this stuff right that's why they were the third i think either the second or the third strongest world superpower after the united states for the majority of the 1900s don't quote me on that but there is something that's happening to me that really makes me feel like you know this question of modernity this question of am i just living every day day to day just to make it to the next one Am I not like getting passionate? Am I not getting excited about the things that I love? I feel like I'm not the only one going through this. And I feel like a lot of Japanese people are going through this too. Because the reality of the situation is that what once was in the 1800s truth, the culture, the way of life, it was truth to them, has now become tradition. And in that transition from tradition, and in that transition from truth to tradition, I feel like a lot of people are losing who they were. They're losing their sense of cultural identity. And this is a big question that we all got to answer for ourselves because we all come from cultures. We all come from different places. We all come from this thing called the human race. And we all humans and we all got this power. But the day-to-day -day impossibilities of actually doing something with our imagination, doing something with our power, doing something with our energy, trap us in boxes until we just feel like clones. We feel like everyone else, but we don't have to feel that way. We can change the way we feel, but it's impossibly hard because real talk, I'm trying to do it today, but there ain't no guarantee that it's gonna happen tomorrow. And that's the consistency. It's the passion, perseverance, and persistence. Real talk, persistence, that's the one that we really gotta emulate because things are not gonna change just because we want them to. One day is not enough. One day is not gonna push us into action. We gotta do it more and more and more and more and more. Like recently, I've been waking up earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier. Now, for like the past month, I've been waking up only at eight o'clock in the morning, right? But Recently, I've been waking up at like six or seven or even five and to bring this all back, even when I lived in Japan, 
I wanted to wake up earlier. I wanted to be able to be inside the culture. I wanted to do things that I thought would help me progress towards my future. But the reality is that the trappings of modernity are so firmly knit into our into our beings, especially living in first world societies, that it's very hard to get that internal motivation without an external force, an external driver to push you somewhere. And that's what I feel is one of the issues with me as a Japanese person. And I'm gonna say it today. Onisuga Taiga, I am a Japanese person. You wanna know why? Because I believe I'm a Japanese person. You wanna, you wanna argue with me about this? Argue with me about it because I've lived in Japan, I've worked in Japan, I've climbed Mount Fuji, I've traveled from Hokkaido to Okinawa, okay, I've had Japanese girlfriends, I have paid Japanese taxes, right? I have done other Japanese business stuff. I've done stuff, man, I feel it in my soul, but not right now, it's in my soul. But my soul is all the way down in like a, in like a well, right? And I buried the well with like cement or something. I gotta like dig it out. And that's hard because I'm lazy and I wanna be lazy. I don't want to dig out my soul energy. So I'm just here wondering about what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Go back to the beginning. This is my lesson for the day. We got to go back to the beginning like this cup of coffee. Look at how cool this mug is. All right, look at this. Go back to the beginning. What made you inspired? What made you in touch with your cultural heritage? What made you in touch with those traditions? What gave you that respecting code in the beginning? For me, it was coffee. No, it wasn't coffee, but coffee was definitely a tool that I used to get in touch with my inner self. And that is why I think from now on, Japan content is coming on the border because I am a modern person, but I don't want to be so modern anymore. I want to go back to some of my traditions. I want to go back to some of my heritage. I want to start respecting these things. I don't want to just continue moving on and on and on and on and on, forward and forward and forward, not looking back. I want to be less modern. I want to be more traditional. And that means I'm gonna to have to work. That means I'm gonna to have to put in the hours, right? Because Japan is still here. Kokuro no naka, it's in my heart. You know what I mean? It's Tameshi no naka, it's in my soul. I know this, man. I can still speak Japanese somewhat, man. And I can study more Japanese. I don't, I don't even know how to read kanji, man. I don't even know how to read kanji. I can learn kanji. That's a hard one, though. <laughs> That's a hard one. Yeah, real talk. Let's, let's simmer down so that we don't get ourselves in word trouble because we get in word trouble. If we say we don't learn kanji, then we're actually going to have to do it. But you know what? No. I'm going to learn kanji. Go back to the starting line of your cultural heritage and I guarantee you you're gonna find things that you missed you're gonna find things that you can learn again that are gonna put you in the right state of mind to get back to that feeling because remember life is processed in feelings feelings create memories well they create the lasting effect of memories and when I think about Japan when I think about the way that I want to deal with modernity as a question of cultural identity and personal identity. I think I want feelings. And I would hope that you would want to feel a certain way too. Anyway, everyone, that's the video for today. We're gonna to make more videos about Japan in the future. I hope you all enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, bye.